Let's talk about something that I love that won't surprise any of you. Lobster. That's right. Love a good lobster. And any excuse for a California Fresh Lobster is a good one, especially when you're driving a Bentley Continental GT. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little grand tour. And what is the difference between a drive and a grand tour, you might ask? Well, a drive ends in you getting to work, and a grand tour ends in you eating lobster from behind the wheel of a $235,000 Bentley. And on the way, I will explain to you why I think the Continental V8S is the best Bentley I've ever driven. Let's roll. If we were making one of those California tourism commercials, we'd include three things. The weather, the roads, and the farmer's markets. Thanks to the first one, we get to take the second one to the third one the whole damn year. For those of us in LA, there's a farmer's market every day of the week, and if we had the old W12 Bentley, we'd probably just drive to one of those. But with this new V8 model and its Spitfire soundtrack, we suddenly had the urge to go a bit further. And with many hours until sunset, why not? Lemons, potatoes, and corn all going in the pot. Bread on the side, and the sacrificial squeal of two buttery lobsters awaits. A couple of years ago, I kind of rode off the Bentley GT because I just didn't find it very involving. It's a nice luxury car, it's fast certainly, it will go over 200 miles an hour in the right trim, but it just didn't do anything for me. And, and that stayed that way for a long time. It's a very heavy car, it's very solid, very well built, just not really the kind of car I like to drive. And then when they came out with the V8, I thought, well, why would they do that? Obviously, there's fuel economy and emission standards. Uh, and I didn't think much of it until Mr. Dan Neal brought one by my house and I heard it. This car proves the hypothesis that the sound a car makes contributes more to the feeling of speed than actual power itself. This car makes 521 horsepower, 505 pound-feet of torque, which is less horsepower and torque than the W12 version. However, it delivers that power in a much nicer way with a really angry tone from the sport exhaust. And this engine, the 4-liter V8, which you get in the Audi RS7 or S8, takes 130 pounds out of the nose of the car. So not only is the car lighter, but it shifts that balance towards the rear axle, getting it a little closer to 50-50. When you throw it into a corner, all of a sudden you've got a much more lively and balanced feeling sports GT. In fact, I would argue that the Bentley GT is really more of a luxury car in W12 trim and only gets even a little bit sporting once you put the V8 in it. Don't get me wrong, this is still a 5,000 pound car, but it really does hide it well. If you ask me what weighed more, a Challenger Hellcat or the Bentley GT V8, I would probably guess the Hellcat, even though the truth is this is 600 pounds more. It just masks it really well with good composure and kind of this slickness and eagerness that I really like. I'm surprised at how good the steering feel is though. It's not like race car-y, but the last W12 one I drove was really, really numb, not very direct. And this one, it's, it's kind of point and shoot. You turn in a little earlier than you think, get on those brakes, load up the front tires, turn, and then power. It does it. It will do it. It's amazing. Not everything is to love here. The electronics, specifically the infotainment, is really slow. It's not very responsive. Everything kind of takes longer than it should. There's no USB port, which is really annoying. And everything else is getting a bit dated, but it's really about the workmanship, the materials, it's all real wood, it's all real aluminum, real polished stuff. This leather is so expensive and it's on everything. There's a $7,000 stereo in this car. And 
all of that stuff added up, it, it does give it a feel of something really special. I do feel kind of important when I'm driving this thing, especially when I'm driving it fast and a bit like an ass. The gearbox is now eight speeds. It's from ZF, same as you get in the Range Rover or in this case in the Audi RS7. The tuning is really good on it. It's really responsive, it's quick, smooth. I wish the paddles were bigger. These little shift paddles are kind of outdated given the transmission technology. Remember, this car's been around since 2004 and in its basic shape and, and form has really not changed. They may not be from Maine, but these California spiny lobsters had better be tasty for 48 bucks a pound. I just wanted to make sure they didn't die before I had a chance to kill them. Do lobsters enjoy running canyons? Something tells me they would if they didn't know what was waiting at the beach at the other end. Best end this quickly. While Bentley has tried very, very hard in the modern era to live up to that kind of Bentley boys rebel, you know, go out and race your cars mentality, I don't think the cars themselves have actually lived up to it. They've all been luxury cars, not rebel, playboy, kind of devil may care type cars. For some reason though, the attitude, the responsiveness, and the agility of this V8, especially when you factor in that sound out the back, it emphasizes those ideals that we get from the Bentley boys, and thus really emphasizes the core values of the Bentley brand. Back when Rolls and Bentley were the same company, people used to ask, well, what differentiates the Rolls Royce from the Bentley, and it was, you know, you're driven in a Rolls Royce, whereas a Bentley you would drive yourself. Okay, I, I see the argument there, but in actuality, I didn't really want to drive the Bentley myself either. I would have rather been driven around in that and just enjoyed the luxury. The V8S, amazingly enough, and all credit to Bentley here, has transformed the GT from a car that I want to go for a ride in to a car that I really, really, really would like to keep driving. Gotta be honest here, we couldn't have timed this one better. An empty beach, a pot of boiling water, fresh local produce, and the first Bentley we've driven that we'd actually call fun. I love this thing, and that's not something I can say about any of their 12-cylinder cars. It's lighter, it's more agile, has a better gearbox, and makes a better noise than any Bentley before it. Like lobsters boiling in a cauldron before an utterly spectacular sunset in the middle of winter, the Bentley V8S is an obscenely decadent, blazingly quick machine that finally revives the true spirit of the original Bentley boys. Oddly enough, all it took was a V8 from an Audi.